Well, praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. I want to welcome you today, day two, to the epic, historic Morris Cirillo Unity in the Spirit School of Ministry. Don, what an incredible opening session we had yesterday. Brother Cirillo reminded us of this incredible new commandment called love. Yes, and he did it, the part of the title, of course, in the spirit, so because good. we've heard so often, it almost sounds like sociology telling us to learn to get along better with one another versus God coming in, expelling the natural, and then substituting his divine love, that divine agape love into our lives. Yeah, and I, <laughs> what I love with Dr. Cerillo is that he always gives us the keys. Yes. That's because that's what we need in our Christian experience. And he says, the keys is to have the mind of Christ. We need to pre-condition, to predetermine that we're gonna love our brothers and sisters. Yes. You know, Mark and Don, we're standing in front of this incredible green board. This is the board that was present for many of Brother Cirillo's School of Ministry, World Conferences. It's the board that you're going to see throughout this unity in the spirit. And I want you to look right now because on the board that you're seeing on the screen right now, Brother Cirillo is pointing to an amazing statement. This will be on the end of course, certificate of completion quiz. I promise you, what a statement he said. He said, a new loyalty is coming to the body of Christ. And I tell you what, there is a world that is waiting to see Peter and John walking up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. Peter and John could not have been two more different people. Peter was the loud, emotional jump before Jesus says how high. And then John was the conservative, you know, there are denominations that are more reserved, and then there are denominations that are more exuberant. But the Bible says that they were walking up together to the temple, at the hour of prayer, and you see there was a lame man that was sitting outside that gate. You know what that lame man did not need? He did not need Peter and John arguing with each other, one-upping each other, but he needed a church that would, instead of focusing on any of their differences, would focus on the need, would focus on the harvest. And so I declare that God is going to bring a new loyalty to the body of Christ. I want you to share these School of Ministry sessions with your pastor. I want you to be an ambassador. Many of you are watching for the second or the third or the fourth time. And you are now ambassadors. You are now teachers. There is an anointing on this ministry to take what God has given to us and give it to somebody else. Would you let God use you as a Unity in the Spirit School of Ministry ambassador? Well, I am excited today. We're gonna go right in to the message. I want you to do what Brother Srillo has taught us so many times, open your spirit wide. I love what Mark and Don remind us. This is not a school of head knowledge, but it's a school with a difference. Today, Brother Srillo is gonna be talking to us about how it is that we come together into oneness. How do we come together into oneness in our family? How do we come together even into oneness in our relationship with God? And then how do we come into oneness with our brother, our sister, those that are maybe not the same as we are. It's easy to be in unity with people that agree with you and you agree with, but God has called us to something much greater. So without any further ado, would you join me again, day two, welcoming God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. I want to read to you a verse of scripture as we begin tonight in Colossians 2, 9 and 10. 
For in him Christ, the whole, everybody say whole, fullness. Let me go back and start that scripture again. For in Christ, the whole fullness, keep those two words, whole fullness, of deity, the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form. Giving complete expression of the divine nature. And you are in him made full and have come to the fullness of life. In Christ, now I don't know whether you can take this tonight. I don't find too many people, in fact, I haven't found very many that have experienced what we are talking about tonight. But after this meeting is over, I pray that every one of you will not have the head knowledge of it, but you will have actually experienced it. In Christ, you too are filled with the Godhead. Now, what did Jesus say? He said, Father, I pray that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they may be one in us. Then forget that last line, and let's jump to the next verse. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them the docks. All that you are and all that you possess because that's what the word glory means. Coming from that translation of the Greek word docks. All that you are and all that you possess. You gave me everything that you are. I am in you. You are in me. We are inseparable. We are one. And all the glory from the beginning of the world and from the before the beginning of the world, which I have, I have given unto them. Oh, hallelujah. In Christ. You know, it's one thing to look at Jesus Christ and say, oh, the Father and the Holy Ghost is in Jesus. But Jesus says that we too are what our Filled, literally filled with the Godhead. I don't know whether you can take the last part of this scripture verse. Colossians 2, 9 and 10, I'm still in it, still reading it. In Christ, you too are filled 
with the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and reach full spiritual stature. Oh, praise God. God, take the blind spiritual cataracts from our eyes tonight. And God, help us to understand that the unity that God planned for the church was not a human, man-made, organized unity. If you believe that Jesus was literally, virtually one with the Father. Do you believe that? When Jesus Christ came to this earth, when the Word was made flesh. There was one very important ingredient that caused the manifestation of this union and this unity that Jesus had with his father to be able to be fully manifested. Jesus said, I come not to do my own will, but I come to do the will of him that sent me. You ever tried to be united with somebody who had a different purpose in life than you did? You ever try to see a home united where the wife's objectives are one way and the husband's objectives are the other way? Remember what I told you, we are not last night of the spirit of this age that cries, I am my own person, and God made me my own person. Now, sorry to say, that's a very bad characteristic outgrowth of the charismatic manifestation. We got women running all over the world thinking they're supposed to do their own thing. Oh, I got my ministry now. My husband just has to understand it. If God's given you a ministry, lady, he'll reveal it to your husband to where you'll be united. You won't be tracing around the countryside, brother, without him backing you up. The will of Jesus Christ was totally blended and in 100% total harmony. He didn't come to do 
do the will of his father. One of the most powerful scriptures in all the Bible is John 4, 34. I preach on it again and again and again and again as I stand before the nations of the world to deliver men and women's souls. John 4, 34. My meat, said Jesus, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish the work. Jesus Christ said, I and my Father are one, John 10, 30. John 10, 38, Jesus said, the Father is in me and I in him. When Philip asked Jesus to show him the Father, what did Jesus say? John 14, 9 and 10. Listen to it. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? What I am telling you, Jesus said, I do not say on my own authority or out of my own accord, but the Father who lives continually. Say that word continually. continually. The Father who lives continually in me does the works, his miracles, his own deeds of power. God that is in me is performing the works. Now, when the Father is in me and the Father and I are in you, you not have to wonder or worry about how the works are going to get done. Just line up your will with our will and watch what There's something about this will. Say this after Brother Srilo, will. will. The Bible says that we are created in the image of God. Now, where is the image of God? It's not in our physical features, it is written that man was created in the image of God. But that doesn't mean that we have God's eyes, that we have his physical appearance. Because God has no physical being. But the image of God, if it's not in our physical beings, where is it, Brother Shul? It's in our spirits. We are created in the image of God in the fact that God made us with characteristics that were just exactly like the same kind of characteristics that God had. Right. Can you go back in your memory to yesterday how Jesus was the exact express image of God? The dox was in him. When the Bible says he was the express image, it means exact likeness. Now, how many of you believe that God was a little baby? 
No. How many of you believe that God had long hair like they draw pictures of Jesus in a beard? Nobody saw the exact likeness until he stood on the Mount of Transfiguration and Moses and Elijah came and talked with him and his garment became white and translucent and they saw something that they had never seen when they looked at Jesus before. They saw the exact image, the visible representation of the Godhead that was in him. God created man in his image. He never made him a puppet. He sent him to this earth. He gave him power, authority. Oh, come on. Somebody say dunamis. The miracle ability of God. Say it again. The of God. Authority. Authority. Exousia. Exousia. The, right the right to exercise. exercise. Dunamis. When God created Adam, he put him in the Garden of Eden with God's characteristics. He gave him a godlike ability. We call it willpower. Willpower. He gave him willpower. Everybody say willpower. willpower. Say it again. Say it again. Man was not forced to love God. There were no strings tied to him. He was not a puppet. That's why man could use his willpower to choose to disobey God. And he used that willpower to disobey him. And as a result, the unity that man had with God, the perfect harmony that man had with God, the perfect union that man had with God, because God came out of the heavens and he would sit with Adam and Eve and sup together and they would eat together and commune together and fellowship together. That union was broken. Say the word restoration. restoration. The God that you and I serve is a God of plan. He's a God of purpose. He's a God of design. He's a God of objectivity. Ever since that very first act of man's disobedience, God put a plan into place. The plan was not just to forgive man for his act of disobedience. The plan was not just to forgive man's sins. That was not just God's plan, but the plan of God was to restore the broken union that Adam and Eve had with God, and the only way that he could do it was to take his glory and give it to his son and send him here to become like us so that he could once again give that glory to us that we could be reunited in one 
able to be united. Come on, do it. Come on, get the mask off. We've never been able to be united. The church has never been able to be united. God's people have never been able to be united. We might as well admit it. God's people are not united. You don't have to say, man, I know it's true anyhow. There is very little unity. And most of the unity that there is, is a surface unity. It's a facade. It's a mass. And may I tell you why there isn't any depth in the so-called unity that exists today? Because that unity is focused and it is centered in the wrong direction. God's not just interested in you and I getting together. You know, I, I'll tell you, the charismatics have got to be careful. They've got to be careful because they're now going around saying, we all got to get together. Now I'm going to tell you something. What good is it for you to get together and have a lot of meetings and a bunch of services and then walk out of the doors and act, brother, just exactly the same way as you did before you came in? No good at all. No good at all. No good at all. Do you know why? We've got the unity focused in the wrong direction. Pastor, we've got it focused in the wrong direction. We've got it focused in the wrong direction. Listen to what Jesus said in that 21st verse of the Gospel of St. John, that 17th chapter. Look at that 21st verse again. Not in your Bibles, but in your memory and in your spirit. Jesus prayed what? He said that they may also be one in us. Now, you see what our problem is? We're trying to get one on ideas. We're trying to get one on methodologies. We're trying to get one on ministry. We're trying to get one on the way in which we do things. And that's not what God ever intended because we're all different individuals, brother, and we're all going to do things different. But what God is looking for is that we learn how to become one with him. What will happen when you become Jesus Christ and the Father which is in Jesus and Jesus which is in the Father and the Father and Jesus come inside you. Have you got any idea what that'll do to your mental thinking process and your relationship with your brother and with your sister? Have you got any idea You'll look past every idiosyncrasy. Oh, yes, you will. You'll look past every way in which they do things, brother. You'll look past every way in which they enunciate or say things. And the only thing you're focusing on is, is the Christ which is in you and the Christ which is in them. And you'll be coming together in the Spirit. In the Spirit. In the Spirit. In the Spirit. Oh, come on, put your hands up and give him praise. Come on, let it flow upon you like a mighty river. Come on, close your eyes. Put both hands up in God's presence. Let it flow like a mighty river.
Jesus. 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 Go ahead, let it flow like a mighty river. Forget everybody in this building. Jesus. 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 Now, we might as well stop trying because there's going to be no unity without first you coming into oneness in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Ephesians 4. I want to read a few verses of scripture. Paul speaking. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. With all lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, even as ye are called in the hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all and through all and... Can you say that last word? Come on, say it. In you all. Put your hands on your chest. Close your eyes. And just visualize for one moment. This is the unity that God is speaking about. The indwelling of the Father and the Son the Holy Spirit with us individually as members of the great body of Christ makes it possible for the members of the body of Christ to be one with another. We're joined together. Feel it in your being. We're joined together in this vital relationship with Christ. Say it, the Father is in me. Christ is in me. The Holy Spirit is in me. There is only one God. There is only one God. And he has chosen, he has chosen to, make my body to make my body his temple. Well, somebody go ahead and say, he has chosen me to make my body his temple. Hallelujah. Yes, and that, the, a natural extension of that is keeping 
the unity in the spirit by the bond of peace. Now that is an obligation that we have, that we take on. The yoke is easy and the burden is light, but Dr. Morris Cirillo wanted us to experience the depth and richness that he experienced in Christ. Now you gotta be careful. Sometimes people, they wanna go to school on Dr. Cirillo. What was the source of his power? So they'll study how he stood at the platform, how he held at the microphone. But you needed to see him in countless situations with countless religious leaders and how the non-essentials were neutralized and taken out of the way because the love of God that he had for them, ministering for their needs, and truly being an ambassador of the Most High God. Yeah, and how can we be one with our brothers and our sister, but it is to be first one with Jesus. And I love what, you know, in the book of John chapter 16, Jesus says, as you have sent me, so have I sent them. But then he says, and the glory you have given me, I have given them. And now, so if I'm one in Jesus, if I'm one in the Father, and Jesus is in the Father, and the Father is in Jesus, and they are in me, so now when I see my brother and my sister, I don't see them in the natural, in the flesh, but I see Jesus in them. I see the glory of Jesus in them. And if I see the glory of Jesus in my brother and my sister, for sure, I'm gonna love Jesus in them and I'm gonna love them. I love that, I love that. You know, Mark, Brother Srillo isn't trying to take us somewhere that he didn't live himself. And we've talked about this before, but I think that one of the most powerful elements of the entire school of ministry is that Brother Trillo is not speaking out of head knowledge, but he's speaking out of experience. Don, you watched him so many times, the price that he would pay behind the scenes for unity in the spirit. And even we could be sitting together, and you know what I'm talking about, and so do you, and a servant of God would come up who may have really done something not that long ago that just wasn't to his credit. Yeah. And Brother Cirillo would take that moment and just receive them, just like Paul uh, receiving John Mark back, you know, yeah. just, just like receiving the prodigal back. And it was truly uh, removed. And of course, if you want secrets from Brother Swillow's life, we know that from Galatians 5, 6, faith worketh by love. Uh, so you don't want to disconnect your faith by not walking in love. You know, Mark, a lot of people look at Brother Swillow's legacy and his life and they see the power, they see the miracles, they see so many of the dramatic, incredible, they see this legacy center. But you know, the secret to his life was the love of God. Oh, yes. And you know, I remember each time he would send me a letter, he would start his letter with, I love you. And it would melt my heart. <laughs> and it would make me available for whatever he would want to ask me. <laughs> that was his way to start his letter. I, Mark, I love you. <laughs> Amen, and so do you know something right now? God is writing you a love letter. It is called the Word of God, and he is reminding you, I love you. And that is how we can then begin to love like Jesus loved. You know, Don, one of the things that I loved about this message today is Brother Trillo tapped into a little bit of the unity that God has provided for us in our relationship. Here's something that he said, you're seeing it on the board right now, I love this. He said, the plan, God's plan, was not just to forgive man for his act of disobedience, the plan was not just to forgive man's sins. That was not God's plan. The plan of God was to restore the broken union that Adam and Eve had with God. And so, Father, I thank you today, Lord, for every man, every woman, every young person that's watching. God, let them know today that you are not just interested in forgiving, 
But God, you are interested in restoring your children back to 100% relationship, 100% connection. And so God, we thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus. God, we thank you for your love. We thank you that that spirit that lives inside of us, your Holy Spirit, sheds abroad and bears witness in our hearts that we are the children of God. And we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your forgiveness. Lord, we thank you that as an outflow of your love and your forgiveness, we are instruments of love. We're instruments of unity in the spirit. And everybody said, amen and amen. Well, I can't wait for us to reconnect tomorrow. I want to encourage you, if you're not getting the emails, let us know in the comments section so that we can make sure you're getting every day the study notes because we're going to a place when we complete this entire course where you're going to have the opportunity to receive a certificate of completion with your name on it. You're seeing people right now on the screen, many thousands and even tens of thousands of students from nearly 200 nations that are participating on a full scholarship in this Morris Cirillo School of Ministry. So we wanna make sure you're getting the study notes and then you'll get the end of course certificate of completion quiz. I want to encourage you, take advantage of the opportunity to get your copy of Unity in the Spirit. You can download the e-version or request the print version and then for those of you that are making any kind of a gift to help the School of Ministry continue to expand during this month, we're going to send you one of the most powerful revelations. Somebody say, I am marked by God's commanded blessing simply because I am a child of God. It will literally change the way you see God. It'll change the way you see yourself, and I believe that it will release a greater blessing, a greater power, a greater presence, a provision of God in your life. And it's our gift for everybody that's on our Facebook, YouTube School of Ministry that is making an offering, a gift of any amount that will help us to continue to expand the School of Ministry and build God and Army. Well, Don, Mark, I'm excited. Tomorrow is going to be another great day with God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. We love you guys, we love you ladies, we love you young people so very much. On behalf of David Cirillo, Teresa Cirillo, our entire team, we can't wait to see you tomorrow, live from Legacy, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.